Hello, this is MakerJ1, and here, here is part two of the LED light ball how-to videos. This is going to be on the control panel. Um, before we start, one thing I want to mention is um, for the other part, um, for the actual part that spins and the LED light bulb part, um, if you can't find a slip ring or you don't want to make one because they're pretty hard to make, you can use a, um, a audio jack. They work pretty good. Um, someone commented that, so thank you whoever did that. Um, but you can find some really small ones, you can find some with four, um, so that, I would imagine that would work very, very good. Um, it would be a lot simpler than making one, um, unless you're really good with a drill and such. Um, so yeah, so we'll start. So, okay, so this one here has four knobs. Um, I upgraded it. Um, so we have the duty cycle, this is the frequency, this is motor number one speed control, which is this motor here. Um, this is motor 2 speed control, which is spins it this way. So, yeah. So, those are the knobs. And then we have the switches up here. This is the power switch. This is the frequency. Um, it changes the capacitor value that's connected to the, f to the um, oscillator circuit. Um, and then these just are on-off switches for the motors because when it's down here, it's not quite all the way off. So, it'll still spin some. Okay, so... So basically, it's pretty simple. I like this construction. It's um, just plexiglass and wood. Um, it looks really cool. Um, so over here we have two, um, two voltage regulators, adjustable LM317 positive um, voltage regulators. Okay, so there's two little um, trimmer pots on there, um, and those are 5K. Um, and then I think I had to use those because normally on the circuit here you would use a 240 ohm resistor right there but because I didn't have any 5k potentiometers so the knobs I only had 10k I think that's why I had to go with 5k of these so that just adjusts the fast and slow speed kind of um, so yeah so here's my power rail. So I've just got two nails, and those work really good. I think they're brass nails. Um, but those just take the positive and negative voltages there. Um, and it, that's 12 volts input from my power supply. You could run off a battery or whatever. So, um, And then here is my circuit that I built for this. Um, this is a basically a pulse width modulation circuit. Um, but I etched it and everything. So these two little... Um, these are just the duty cycle, so you can make it so that it is, um, make the duty cycle, make it so, adjust it so it's perfect, so that the duty cycle is 100% off, and you can make it so it's 100% on, so, or 0% duty cycle and 100% duty cycle. Um, so here's the circuit for, that I drew up for that, let me refocus. Okay, here, so here's the circuit, so I've got a filter cap up here, um, then 5.5 five timer. And then this one meg, which actually I'm using 100 um, kilo ohms, um, is the frequency um, potentiometer. And then, let's see, this is a, oh, I didn't mark that down, but this is a 10K resistor. Um, this is a um, 10K potentiometer, and that is the duty cycle. And then we have two more right here that adjust the... Um, the duty cycle so that it you can get it perfectly um, so when it's all the way at one end it's 100% on or 100% duty cycle and then at the other end it's 0% and then here's the op amp right here and that's just a uh, I used a PC358 and that works pretty good it's actually a dual op amp but works just fine um, so yeah, pretty simple circuit. This capacitor right here is just a, um, these little capacitors right here, I think they're film capacitors, so I've got three on there. Um, I forget the values of them, but, so that little switch is just a, um, center off switch. So, the smallest value one is always connected up, even when it's in the off position. So that one, I think it's like, um, I think it's point zero one um, micro Farad. And then the other two, this one is like, um, I think this one's one microfarad, the one, the big one. And then this other one over here is like, 
Um, I'm not really sure, but it's somewhere halfway in between there. So, works pretty good. Um, and then, let's see, what else? So, so yeah, that's that capacitor there. Um, so that, this switch dramatically changes the fre frequency. So you can get, um, when it's up in this position, it's a really, really um, low frequency. Um, and then in this position, it's a really high frequency, and then this is a medium frequency. So yeah, that works pretty good. Um, what else? I guess that about covers it. Um, oh, so you don't have to use the duty cycle. That does make it a lot cooler. Um, but a just a normal 5-5 timer circuit will do just fine. And just have three knobs on here. Um, the thing I don't like about it, though, is the normal 5-5 timer chips when... Well, the duty cycle does make it a lot cooler. So, yeah, I'll go with that if you're making one from scratch, um, and if you can, if you have the parts. Um, but I did try to make a one, it just, it just a 5-5 timer that a um, pulse width modulation one, but that didn't really work. It When you change the like um, duty cycle, the frequency would also change, so yeah. So this circuit, the duty cycle and frequency change independently. So works pretty good. Um, now you could, instead of the the um, voltage regulators, you could use a uh, large rheostat like this, but I don't like this because, well actually, I, before I only had one of the um, adjustable voltage regulators, so I had to use the adjustable voltage regulator and this. So because this only, so when you'd, I had to have a five volt supply also and have this switch here Instead of switching the motor on and off, it would switch between 5 and 12 volts input to the um, rheostat because the rheostat didn't have a big enough um, uh, range. So when you'd put on, if it was on 12 volts, if you went right to the beginning, it would go pretty fast, and then this would be all the way up here would be super fast, and that'd be straight 12 volts. So yeah, um, I guess that's about it. So I guess I'll just show you real quick the duty cycle um, and how that works. So just turn it on here, turn on this switch, then I gotta turn this one on too. And then we'll turn on motor one. So and the duty cycle is at zero percent now. So now let me get the frequency. Okay, so gotta get a good visible frequency here. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So now what I'm... Wait, let me make it... Okay, so... The duty cycle will change the length of time that the LEDs are on. So the line there will get longer or shorter. So so this is a... That's not very good. Uh, let me try higher speed here. Okay, so... All right, that's what we want. So right now I'm just changing the frequency to try to get it to look like it stopped. Okay, there we go. All right, so now what I'm going to do is change the duty cycle. So, well, there's a little bit of a... It's because my front panel is moving. So that's the duty cycle. So that's 100% duty cycle, and then that would be 0% duty cycle. So you can make it like 25% and whatever. So that works pretty good. Um, so the next video will be a run of it, I guess. I have to figure what camera I'm going to do that with because this camera adds all kinds of flashing in there, as you can see. Um, so I might use an older video camera. Um, hopefully I'll try to do an HD. Um, so I hope this helps if you're making an LED light bulb. Um, post a comment if you have any questions or personal mess message me and I will put the um, uh, a link in the description to where I got this um, this circuit um, thanks for watching